Okay, so in this video, I'll finally show you how you can get renders that are good enough for a weapons artist portfolio on ArtStation using only Blender EV. And if you have any technical difficulties with any part of this video, or you're just looking to get some feedback on projects of your own, then please consider joining my Discord server. We have several channels in there where you can share screenshots of your artwork, and there are plenty of people who would be happy to give you helpful critiques and advice. All right, so we've imported all the textures and we've created our shader materials. Okay, so moving on, it's time to create our world scene and the rest of our scene lighting. So in the shader viewport here, we're going to switch from object to the world shader graph editor. And in our 3D viewport, we're going to go from the material shader viewport to the rendered viewport. And in our render viewport, we simply have this single flat color that is illuminating our entire scene. And that's because that's what we have currently on our world shader graph. Now, before I go for the process of creating our own custom world shader material, I wanted to let you know that if you go to this drop down next to the viewport display options, you can actually disable the scene world lighting. This causes the rendered viewport to use the same lighting settings from the shader viewport, which also gives you some very easy and simple controls, as well as eight internally stored HDRIs that you can now use for your own rendering purposes. So I can go ahead and select a new HDRI, I can rotate it, I can increase the world opacity, I have control over the strength of the brightness, and another thing that's really big is I have simple controls for how much blurring I want in the HDRI for my background. And like that, I can start creating area lights and insert a camera, and I can use this scene as my render setup. However, there's a few other controls that we don't have access to without creating our own custom world shader graph. But I wanted to let you know that you have the option to use Blender's internal HDRIs as your render scene settings. Okay, so I'll go back to our viewport dropdown and I'll re-enable the scene world lighting. All right, so I went to HDRI Haven and I picked out an HDRI image for our background, one that I liked and it's this Cypher Fontaine 1D. And I'm just using a 2K HDRI. Now I'm gonna go ahead to our world shader graph, shift A, search for environment texture, and go ahead and pick out your HDRI and plug it into the color on your background node. Now, assuming you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, which you should have enabled, Go ahead and hit Control T on your environment texture to fire up a mapping and texture coordinate node. And with this mapping node, we can now use the Z rotation to change the rotation of our HDRI in our scene. All right, that looks good, but let's say that we don't want the HDRI in our background. We simply want the lighting that it imparts to our model. Well, that's really simple. All that you have to do is create a mix RGB node in between your environment texture and your background node. Then go ahead and generate a light path node and plug in the camera ray output into the factor input on the mix RGB. Now you can change the background color to whatever you want in the second color input. Meanwhile, our 3D model is being unaffected and retains all the lighting information from our HDRI image. And with all that, we have all the controls that we had before, from being able to control things like the brightness to be able to control our background color and then be able to control the rotation of our HDR lighting. And if we want, we can go ahead and plug in whatever we want into this second color input. It could be a gradient texture, it could be another HDRI, and it would not affect whatever input we have in the first color slot. We would still maintain the lighting setup from this first HDRI. However, the one control that we don't have from when we were using Blender's shader viewport lighting setup is the ability to easily blur the background. So if I go back to where we can see our HDRI, say that we do want this HDRI in the background because we like the way it looks, but we want to be able to blur the background because we're going to have some depth of field settings on our camera in our render scene. So how do we do that? Well, luckily, Default Cube went through the process of creating a tutorial on how to create a procedural blurring effect 
and I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. I'm not going to go through the process of creating everything, but I've compacted it all into one handy little utility node, which has everything we need. So I'm going to go ahead and insert default cubes blurring node in between the mapping and environment texture node. And with that, it successfully blurs our HDRI background. Now I'm going to go ahead and lower the intensity of this blur to something around 0.1. Now, I prefer to have a single color as my background image and just use the HDRIs for lighting information. But just so you know, you have this option to blur any HDRI that you want to use in your scene. All right, so I'm going to go back to using just a single flat color as my background. And I'm going to make it something like a dark, desaturated uh, value. As you can see, we got that single flat color and we're using the HDRI for our lighting information. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start setting up the actual lights inside my scene. Before I do that, I want to actually lower the strength on our HDRI's brightness to, let's say, 0.3. All right, so the scene's a little bit dark, but we still got a good amount of ambient light from that HDRI. I'm going to hit Shift A and let's start inserting some lights. I'm going to create an area light. I'll drag that off. And uh, I'll turn back on our overlays just so we can see what we're working with and start rotating this into position. I'll go over to the light control properties and I'll change the color. And then I'll just start duplicating off a few of these area lights and adjusting a few things such as the color and intensity. And from here, I'm just going to play around and get a little creative with my lighting setup. Usually, I like to keep it at a minimum of three to five lights in my scene, but that could vary depending on what I'm working on. Many times, I'll go to the drop down next to the object type visibility, and I'll disable the lights in my scene. That way, I can just preview the HDRI lighting. You'll then see me go back to the world shader graph, and I'll go back to the mapping node just to rotate my HDRI some more. I'm looking to get some subtle rim lighting from our HDRI image. Often with maybe one or two of my area lights, I like to bump the vibrance value up to two in order to create a really strong key light in my scene. Now you can go ahead and you can get a really cool scene just using area lights. But I'm going to go ahead and do something a little bit extra and go ahead and get a very subtle amount of volumetric fog in our scene. This is something that I just like to have in my renders. So I'll go to the world shader and I'll create a volume scatter node and I'll plug that into the volume input on our world output. And obviously this is way too much right off the bat and we are lost in a foggy sea. So I'm going to go ahead and lower the density to something a lot smaller like 0.1. Then I'm going to lower it even more to something like 0 0.05 or even 0 0.02. Now, as you can see, this little misting of volumetric fog that we have picks up a lot of light from our area lights, but also picks up a lot of ambient light from our HDRI. And since we have a very sunlit HDRI, it's making that fog look very orange and brownish. So I'm going to just adjust it to a slightly desaturated opposing color, kind of a light blue. All right, then I'm just going to make a few more adjustments to my area lights. The next thing I want to do is create an empty object that I can parent all the lights in my scene to. That way I can have controls over the rotation and position of all the lights in my scene. All right, so I'm just going to go to Shift A. I'm going to create an empty sphere, and then I'll select all the lights in my scene, and then select the empty sphere last. Hit Control P to parent all the lights to the empty. And now, if I just select the empty sphere, I hit R for rotate, and Z to constrain it to the Z axis, you can see I can rotate all the area lights in my scene around the weapon model. And this is a good setup to have, as you are rotating around your model to get renders from different angles and close-ups to show off all the hard work that you put in. You can easily rotate and adjust all the lights in your scene while still being able to make adjustments to individual lights on their own. So the next thing that I want to do is go over to the render properties and basically just start flipping stuff on. So I'm going to hit the checkbox next to ambient occlusion, next to bloom, 
Next to screen space reflections, I won't need motion blur at all because there's no animations or anything going on. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the drop down next to the volumetrics because one of the things you might have noticed when you created the volume scatter node is that there is a lot of light banding in our scene. Well, we can fix that by one, increasing the tile size from four pixels, eight pixels, maybe even 16 pixels. And I'm going to really bump up the samples here to something around 256. Now, this might be a little bit more processing intensive, but I think it's worth it for your renders. Also, be sure to go to the drop down next to shadows and hit the checkbox for soft shadows. All right, now let's go ahead and hit Shift A and let's create a camera. We'll hit zero on the numpad to go into the camera view. We'll hit Shift and tilde to go flying around in our first person view. And let's start getting an angle that we want for our render. All right, so let's say we want this angle for our render. Let's go ahead and show all the objects in our viewport and we will select the empty sphere, hit R and Z to constrain it to the Z axis, rotate our lighting setup around until we get something that we kind of like. Now we can go back to select our camera, go to the camera options, we'll enable depth of field and on the focus object, I'll hit the little eyedropper icon and let's click on something maybe like the main receiver of our weapon design. And there we go. Now we have a depth of field effect where the stuff most forward to the camera and farthest back are falling out of focus. We have this great plane of focus field right here on the center of the weapon. And you can adjust all those settings here in your aperture settings. So you know what? This is a really shallow depth of field. So we can change that by increasing our f-stop as we would on a camera. So I'm going to go to 5.6 and there we go that shallow depth of field isn't as blurry as it was before and now if we want to go back to flying around our weapon design our camera will actually stay focused on the center of the weapon where we selected that lower receiver as our focus object but say we want to get up close here and get a nice render of the front of this barrel and the gas block well we could remove the lower receiver as our focus object and try selecting the gas block, but huh, that didn't really work. And that's because pretty much all the objects on this gun have their origin point located at the same world origin point. So what we can do is just simply create another empty object and place that in the location that we want our camera to focus on. And with all that completed, you should be ready to start getting awesome real-time renders of all your weapon designs and other video game props simply using Blender Eevee. If you found this video useful, I would love to see some of the results you get from using anything you learned in this video. So feel free to join my Discord server where we have channels that you can share your artwork and also get feedback and advice for any projects that you're working on. So thanks for watching, social media links in the bio, like and subscribe.